precious steel. The Kera Oshi method from Bloomery making Tamahagane. The precious steel is different than traditional blast furnace of modern blast furnace. This is a direct steel making process and in this case the Tatara is operated as a bloomery. The Kera is a lump, an iron sponge, a massive conglomerate of iron, steel and slag. To sort out which pieces of Kera was Tamagane and which were not, they broken the block into several pieces and performed several tests to classify them. If the small block analyzed was harder, breaks instead of bending and was generally located in the outer zone of the Kera. Hence why it was limited compared to the amount of Bukera. It was Tamagahane. The other grade of steel, low carbon and pure iron, react in different ways as well so it was easier with the right amount of carbon figuring out how much carbon was inside. Before sending the various pieces of steel and iron and iron to blacksmiths, they were usually consolidated by hammering. The pieces were heated until they were red and then hammered. This process allowed to further improve the purity of the iron or the steel since the slag trapped inside is squeezed out. Kera contains inhomogeneous mixture of wrought iron, Bukera, 0.2% of carbon steel, contains steels and pig iron, Zuku, with 2% of carbon steel. The carbon content in Kera is not evenly distributed. High carbon steel has about 0.6 to 1.5% of carbon in the steel is called Tamahagane. Low carbon iron contains about 0.2% of carbon steel. It is often resmelted with pig iron to make Saga Hagane containing 0.7% of carbon steel. Kera result of deoxidation when charcoal and ironsen are combated together. From 8 tons of ironsen and 13 tons of charcoal, Kera has 2.5 tons of weight from Tatara. With 1.8 tons of steel, with 500 kilos of steel that will, will be useful for weapon manufacturing. Only 180 kilos of steel with high carbon content will be useful for making around 18 high craftsmen short uchi katana bohi or around 9 high craft thick long uchi katana nohi 1.5 tons of steel askera cost around 100,000 dollars it is 100 times more than you pay for modern steel tamahagane this is Tamahagane when it's quite silvery as the name, jewel steel, precious steel. Tamahagane is not cast iron because between 0.6 to 1.5 of carbon steel, percentage of carbon steel, instead of 2 to 2.2 percentage of carbon steel for pig iron. From 21 tons of charcoal and iron sand, Kera represent around 5% of raw materials mass. Then from 1.5 tons of Kera, only 500 kilos of steel for weapon, around 200 kilos for Tamahagane for sword smithing. So Tamahagane represents around 10 to 20 percent from Kera. So Tamahagane represents around 0.5 percent from 21 tons of raw material. It is really precious and expensive steel. The best part of the steel with 0.6 to 1.5 percentage of carbon steel, Tama means precious, Hagane means steel. Swordsmiths keep this precious steel and will clean it with forge work. Altof, the name Tama Hagane did not take root until the middle of the Meiji period, 1868 to 1912. The existence of a high quality steel called Shira Hagane, white steel which is considered equivalent to Tamahagane, was confirmed during the Tenmon period, 1532-1554. Tamahagane has been valued since the Edo period. 
as an excellent steel that can be used as hagane blade metal simply by forging it due to its extremely low impurity content and uniform quality of the material. The name Tamahagane existed as early as the late Edo period. At that time, Tamahagane was a fine grained round ball produced by grinding Kera. Most of the intermediate carbon steel, wrought iron 0.2 percentage carbon steel and resmelted steel will be used for tools or knives only the best pieces of high carbon steel low carbon iron and pig iron are used for swordsmithing. Decarburization process. From Tamahagane 0.6 to 1.5 percentage of carbon steel, it will be reduced to 1.1 percentage. It occurs when the metal is heated to temperature of 800 degrees Celsius or above when carbon in the metal reacts with gases containing oxygen or hydrogen. From our modern steel industry technology perspective, Tamahagane is a raw steel material that is an impure metal because iron ore contained in iron sand is impure raw material and Tatara furnace can only reach a limited highest temperature of 1300 degrees Celsius for removing impurities from the steel. The yield with homemade smelting steel tube furnace, a Japanese knife swordsmith could produce from 30 kilos iron sand around 10 kilos of steel. That is the equivalent of one bohi thin uchi katana of 1 kilo and 60 70 centimeters nagasa with a good Japanese swordsmith. Sparkling process on modern grinding machine can reveal carbon content. Traditionally, it was hammered to define different carbon level content if the steel material was bending or breaking as brittle. Sagegane from Zuku Ushi blast furnace or high temperature traditional furnace as modern steel industry. The Zuku Ushi Tatara slightly differs from its counterpart, the Kera Ushi. Usually, the starting material is either iron ore or a particular iron sand type called akame, which is easily reduced in the furnace. The air is supplied throughout the wall of the lower part of the furnace. The angle of the lower part of the furnace is larger and iron sand is added after charcoal. Out of the Tatara could reach about 1500 degrees Celsius which is still below the melting point of iron. In this process, the iron ores are left 4 days inside the furnace. So the temperature is even in the wall furnaces, unlike in the Kera version. This allows the carbon atoms to spread evenly and react with the iron ores, forming cast iron, which melting point is around 1150 degrees Celsius. When the steel is in its liquid state, the slag is fully separated and the final product would be much purer compared to the ones of a bloomery. However, cast iron is produced and not steel. This means that a further process called fining is needed to lower down the carbon content of the material and make steel and wrought iron. In Japanese, the whole process is called Ookaji and involves sage, which turns cast iron into medium-high carbon steel called sage gane, and honba, which lower the carbon contents even further and product oro shigane with the same properties of wrought iron. Unlike the kera oshi to produce steel with the zuku method, two phases are needed, hence the name indirect. The first one is the smelting of liquid steel, pig iron or cast iron. The furnace is heated, charcoal is added and later on iron sun ores. The, pro the process lasts 4 days in which the slag is fully separated from the steel. The final product would be cast into molds and then is brought into the Japanese finery, which were closer to the furnace and decarburized into the recrowed material, this is where the fining phase starts. In the first passage called Sage, the pig iron blocks were set in a tunnel in the front of a tuyere tube for blowing air into the furnace, covered with charcoal 
and then fired with blowing air and after one hour the blocks were melting down and their carbon content was lowered in between 0.7 to 1 percentage of carbon steel. Humidity was carefully checked and eventually water was added since high temperatures causes to dry the hurt and make the steel too brittle. After two hours, Sagegane was obtained and there was no material loss. The second passage, called Honba, Sagegane blocks were mixed with Bukera blocks in two portions with one proportion as quantity. The process is similar. Charcoal was added and with air blast, the first Sagegane blocks started to melt down. Then they were agglomerated and decarburized further. After this process was ended, the output was forged by hammering and heating and transformed into plates. In this case, there was a loss of material of 30 to 40 percent and the final carbon content was around 0.1 percentage of carbon steel. The Zuku Oshi method, which was established since the Kamakura period, 1192 to 1333, not only was older than the Kera Oshi method, which dated back to the Tenbun era, 1532, but it was even more used throughout Japan. And it is not an impressive feat. Altof blast furnaces are more sophisticated and advanced than bloomery ones, the Japanese probably obtained their technology from China, which was already using blast furnaces. And until recently, it was assumed that in China, bloomery were not used at all. This thesis has been debunked by recent evidence, but blast furnaces remains the main source for steel and iron in ancient China. Altof, it is assumed that both methods started to be practiced since the 6th century in Japan, the Zuku Oshi was the one used the most, especially in the Edo period. So the majority of iron and steel objects will have been made from Zuku Tatara. Back in the early 20th century, the Tatara was obsolete. Modern steel blast furnace were incredibly better than the old and traditional clay smelted, smelters. After World War II, a lot of history and knowledge was lost in Japan and few gentlemen started to study swords in history in depth with modern tools. There was actually a debate if the swordsmiths of the old days used Tamahagane or Sagegane, and in the 70s, when the Nitoho Tatara started to be operated, they choose Okera Oshi Tatara. The emphasis on this method is likely to be expressed by the fact that the bloomery might have been a Japanese native development, and it's quite unique in the sense that it uses iron sun instead of iron ores. This is where the inflation of Tamagahane came from. Apart from that, the Kera Oshi Tatara is just a bloomery, nothing special about it, and Tamagane is just a higher carbon sponge steel. However, there are still modern historians and swordsmiths like Manabe Zumihara that stress on the importance of the Zuku Oshi Tatara and still use decarburized cast iron to make sword blades. What is the difference? between Sagegane and Tamahagane. Sagegane could be made with the same amount of carbon of Tamahagane, which in both cases is not suitable for weapons and armor. In fact, is lowered down during the forging process and modern analysis have shown that the carbon in swords age was neither higher than 0.8 percentage of carbon steel. Both would be rather heterogeneous due to the technology used. One of the key differences is in the amount of non-metallic inclusions or slag. Artifacts made in the bloomery always contain trapped slag from the extraction process. Since the iron doesn't liquefy and also smithing slags inclusion introduced during the forging process. On the other hand, artifacts made through refined cast iron only contain smithing slags which means the Sagegane is purer and better than Tamahagane, even if by a small amount. This is also true for the wall output of the two Tatara compared. The Zuku Oshi method produced a higher quality final product. However, it is fair to highlight and underline that is in a pre-industrial world, 
slag would have always been present inside metal objects, be it in Europe or Japan. Despite its flaws, the Kera Oshi method offers other advantages. It was faster and could directly produce high carbon and low carbon steel without going into the lengthy process of decarburization, an asset quite important during the Sengoku period, where the demand of iron and steel artifact was incredibly high. Cast iron has less impurities because its liquid state allowed the slag to be completely separated. But its carbon content makes it too brittle to be used for aged weapons or armor and need a further process of refining. This is why in this direct method was undesired. Modern steel. Smelting steel can be manufactured from iron ore or from scrap. Iron ore and lime are first crushed and agglomerated in a cooking plant. The coal is transformed into coke by heating it away from the air. Iron ore and coke are heated to very high temperatures in blast furnace. Liquid cast iron is obtained from the first casting, the residues are removed. Cast iron, which still contains a lot of impurities and carbon, is refined by oxidation in a converter where most of this carbon is burnt. We obtain liquid steel. The liquid steel is then sent to a refining station where its quality is adjusted by continuous casting the steel is shaped. It is poured into bottomless molds and cooled to give half products. Steel can be obtained from scrap metal also. In electric furnaces, they are melted by a knock which springs between the electrodes. Smelting steel. You can see here modern steel industry and we will try to understand a second time more in detail what is smelting steel from industry. So you have iron ore, pig iron, and liquid steel. So iron ore is prepared in a sinter plant, then smelted with coke in blast furnace. From blast furnace it's created pig iron. The cast iron passes through a converter, then we obtain liquid steel. Iron is the principal ingredient of the steel but it does not exist in its pure state in nature. So, because of that, it has to be transformed from the raw product from the nature, it becomes iron oxide. We talk about iron ore that contains iron. Iron will be separated from iron ore by removing oxygen and other impurities. But first we will prepare the ore on the agglomeration line. On the agglomeration line, the ore is crushed, grated and then cooked, thus obtaining a sort of porous and rigid cake which is made up of agglutinated agglomerated grains. It is this crushed agglomerate that will, will melt in the blast furnace at very high temperature with coke. Coke is a powerful fuel made from coal. Coke is in fact almost pure carbon and it is this carbon which will allow us to separate the iron from the oxygen. The coke and the agglomerate are transported to the blast furnace. The blast furnace is one of the most impressive elements of the steel complex. It can reach 90 meters of height. Sintrate ore and coke are loaded in alternate layers into the upper part of the blast furnace. The proportion is 5 doses of ore for 1 dose of coke and loading and dosing are automated in the bottom of the blast furnace we blow hot air at almost 1200 degrees celsius. This causes the combustion of the coke which will lead to the fusion of the ore. In the blast furnace the union between iron and oxygen 
is broken by carbon. You can see here carbon is breaking the union between um, iron and oxygen. In the blast furnace, the union between iron and oxygen is broken by carbon, which has a very strong attraction to oxygen. Thus, thanks to the carbon contained in the coke, we isolated the iron. At the exit of the blast furnace, liquid cast iron is collected at 1500 degrees Celsius. Cast iron is a mixture of 96% of iron and 4% of carbon. This carbon comes from the small part of the coke which has not burnt. A steel does not contain more than 1% of carbon. So at the exit of the blast furnace, we are still at more than 4% of carbon in the steel. It is not steel, it is cast iron. With a ton of ore, we make 600 kilos of cast iron. The rest is transformed into gas and liquid residue to solidify. Cast iron goes to the steel works. The cast iron goes to the steel works. The cast iron is transported hot in special wagons. Upon arrival at the steel works, it is poured into an enormous tank called a ladle. This pocket is rotted to the converter. It's kind of a giant port where cast iron is converted into steel. On the bed of scrap metal towards the liquid cast iron, we then blow in oxygen to burn most of the carbon and the impurities which are contained in the cast iron. The bath is at 1600 degrees. At the outlet of the converter, we obtain steel which we can call white steel. At this stage, it is not quite finished and it is not the desired shape. Thus, in white steel, there remains a small proportion of carbon which is still too high for certain grades of steel. It is thus at the refining station that we decarburize, that is to say that we re remove the excess of carbon. To decarburize, the wild steel, oxygen and argon are injected into the device. The carbon is evacuated to the upper part in gaseous form. Then we add the chemical compounds corresponding to the shade order, depending on the case, this could be magnesium, silicon, chromium, nickel or other elements. At the time of refining, everything is carefully controlled. The doses are precise to the nearest millionth. Moreover, each product has its own identity card which accompanies it from the order to deliver. These are the main stage of the cast iron industry, quite simply because you have to go through cast iron before making steel. With one ton of cast iron, we make 1.1 tons of steel then different steps for giving different shape to the steel. So you can see here how then the liquid steel is uh, falling down to different molds to make different shape and with this different shape and different kind of uh, cool down process you will have a uh, different way to uh, sell and export uh, the final product from different type of shape. So we can see that modern steel is the same closer way than Zuku Oshi way uh, from traditional uh, Tatara second method 